line. Okay, so just quickly, I'm going to initiate a failover. Now this is a graceful failover I'm going to do, which will gracefully shut down the virtual machine on the source server and bring it back up online on the uh, target server. When I hit the failover button, I get prompted, would I like to complete a live failover or a test failover? A live failover will shut down the source virtual machine and start the replica virtual machine connected to the network. A test failover will start up the replica virtual machine without affecting the source virtual machine and will not connect the replica to the network. In this case, I'm going to initiate a live failover. Hit the failover button, bring my virtual machine managers back and to focus. You actually see in the background the double take console is powering off the source virtual machine. As we can see in Hyper-V Manager, Server 2 is stopping. We can see our continuous ping has now stopped. Virtual machine is offline. We can see a new virtual machine has appeared on Hyper-V node 7, server 2 underscore replica. You can now see the double take console is reporting that the server has been failed over and we can see our continuous ping has returned. Now that the uh, replica server is online, I can connect to it. I can log into it. And your users can carry on using the server as normal. Once we've initiated a failover, we're just returning to the uh, double take console. We have two more options. We can firstly undo the failover. If we wish to return to our original source server, we can initiate a undo failover. Or we can choose to reverse the protection. Reversing the protection will set the uh, protection job in the opposite direction and return the server to the original node. So I'm just going to initiate this reverse protection job. I will get warned that the, the virtual machine server 2, which is currently on node 8, will be shut down and removed from the inventory before being overridden. You can see node 8 still has server 1 and it's currently turned off. I'm just going to say yes. Again, we can see activity. We're reversing protection. Notice the, uh, the time it takes to uh, resync the data when you're doing a uh, reverse protection job is much less. Um, the bulk of the data contained within the VHD files and AVHD snapshot files that are being brought back is identical. Um, so the resync uh, doesn't take anywhere near as long. Once the uh, connection has synced up again, we said to be protected once more, and we can initiate another failover to bring the uh, original server 2 back online on the original host server, host number 8. So I'm just going to initiate another live failover which will complete the demonstration of a graceful failover and then we'll move on to looking at a ungraceful failover. As you can see there are currently no virtual machines on node 8. You can see the replica of server 2 is shutting down now turn off you 
can see server 2 has now appeared on node 8 and it is starting up we can connect to it and actually watch it starting up that concludes the demonstration of a graceful failover I'm now going to demonstrate a failover condition being caused by a host server failure. Before I do this, we'll just take a quick look at our Hyper-V manager. We can see HV node 07 is running a server called server 1. I'm now just going to simulate, first of all, a reboot of server 7, server HV node 7 because we do not want to initiate a fail of condition for something as simple as a host server reboot. Connected to HV node 7 and I'm just going to reboot. see on the right hand side I am pinging the virtual machine that is on HV node 7 and I'm also pinging HV node 7 itself so we will see exactly what happens when as, as the node goes down and comes back up again as you can see the double take connection status has changed it is reporting an error We can see protection status is letting us know that the source server is down. Now see that the uh, Hyper-V host has come back online. Our automatic failover, which is actually configured for 10 failures, reached 6 out of 10. So it is the Hyper-V host was not offline for long enough to initiate a failover condition. We can now see the virtual machine, server 1 is now back online. We just need to wait a few more moments and the double take connection will be resynced. you can see our connection has been established again there was no need for a reboot uh, a resync of the uh, double take connection we're now back in sync and the server is protected I'm now going to simulate a genuine host failure I'm going to simulate the failure by disconnecting the network card of the Hyper-V host uh, which will cause double take to initiate an automatic failover after the timeout period has expired.